So you're questioning your sexuality, huh? Interesting. I'm here today to talk to you about asexuality once again, except this time I'm talking to the people who may or may not be asexual. These are for people who are questioning their sexuality, who think they might be on the ace spectrum but aren't really sure, who kind of need a little bit more guidance. Obviously, I identify as asexual, uh, specifically heteroromantic asexual, but still on the ace spectrum, still queer if I want to be. If you're questioning your sexuality, I would recommend first of all checking out my video, Asexuality 101. It's all about asexuality and kind of what that looks like, what that means, uh, how it pertains to me personally, and that's a really good video to start you out if you have no idea what asexuality even is. Now, if you've watched that video and you've done some research and you're still questioning, am I actually ace? What does that mean? How do I even know what kind of ace I am? Well, I'm here to be your guide your ace guide, if you will. Okay, here's the thing. It's really hard to define asexuality because sexual attraction is such a slippery thing and it really doesn't have a good definition. But there are a couple people I've met who have been uh, convinced that they're asexual when in actuality, it's just because they're single or because they can't really find a partner that they like or they haven't fallen in love yet. And I don't mean this in a way that's like mean to be like, you thought you were ace, but you're actually not. Because it's totally fine if you think you're one sexuality and then a couple months later realize, hey, that's not true, I'm actually this sexuality. Sexuality is really fluid, so it can change over time. However, you shouldn't use asexuality as just like a token sexuality that like, if you're questioning, you're like, oh, well, I can't find anybody that I like, so obviously I'm on the ace spectrum. That's not really the same thing. Now, there is such a thing, obviously, as gray sexuality and demisexuality, and that can be a little bit more fluid and slippery, even more than asexuality. The best thing you can do if you're questioning your sexuality is to read about other people's sexualities and their experiences. Um, I know Tumblr has a lot of posts and forums and various things all about um, people's experiences with asexuality. Um, it's better to do that for asexuality than it is for other sexualities, because with other sexualities, I feel like it's kind of obvious if you like guys or girls or other people, non-binaries, etc. However, uh, asexuality, you really have to do a lot of research. Really just like dig into that research before you actually like sit through the rest of this video because I want you to like feel like you understand asexuality. Say you did your research and you're like, Jenna, I think I'm ace, but like there's so many different types of ace, how do I know? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you really don't. For asexual people, it's really hard for us to come up with labels oftentimes because a lot of us haven't been in relationships. A lot of us don't necessarily wanna be in relationships. A lot of us have trouble with relationships. And so it's hard to uh, give yourself a label when you maybe haven't had experience or don't want experience or anything like that. I know one of the struggles that I've had in deciding whether or not I'm ace is that I, have really had zero romantic relations or sexual relations with anybody. And so it's really hard for me to say like, I am heteroromantic ace because like, what if I find somebody who is a girl who I suddenly feel sexual attraction to? What does that even mean? I don't know, it could happen though. I think that's the problem with ace people is that we always are thinking of the hypotheticals and that's what makes it so difficult to give ourselves labels. Like I said, there are different types of asexualities and so it can be kind of hard to figure out which one is you. Um, for instance, first you have to figure out, well, am I asexual, am I demisexual, am I gray sexual? I don't know, am I? If you're trying to figure out which one of those you are, kind of go with whatever label feels most comfortable to you. They are sometimes interchangeable, um, or they can seem that way from outsiders' perspectives, but a lot of people who pick uh, whichever one of those that they really connect to, it is a serious connection and they think, oh yeah, well, this is me. I personally, like I said, I kind of identify as asexual at the moment. In the past, I really thought I was demisexual, but I haven't met anybody to change my mind about that yet. But I know most people who are demisexual, like they're very certain that they're demi because they have had connections with other people or, um, well, that's the main thing. They have connections with other people and that has allowed them to know that they are demisexual. Gray sexual people, I don't have a lot of experience with gray sexuality, so I am probably not the best person to give advice for you on that. But gray sexual people are way more fluid, I feel like, than demi and ace people. Do more research on gray sexuality, but that is definitely something to think about. If you're really, really unsure about your asexuality, but you know you're on the spectrum, but you're not sure if you're demi or fully ace or what you are, gray sexual is a great way to be like an umbrella term of like, I don't really know what I am, but I'm on the A spectrum. Yeah, and if you have questions on that, um, definitely reach out and I can try and help you find some people who'd be able to help you talk about that. If you figured out which one of those you are and now you're like, 
R romantic attraction? What is that? How do I deal with that? Romantic attraction, uh, l like I've explained in the past, is basically um, wanting romance with somebody, wanting a relationship that is more than a platonic friendship, uh, that could include physical sensations and touch and stuff like that, but is like, I really just want to like fall in love with you, you know? Like that, that, that's romance, obviously. And that is where uh, it can get more similar to allosexual people. Uh, in allosexuality, obviously, you kind of connect your sexuality and your romantic attraction into like the same type of person, basically. So heterosexual people are also heteromantic, in theory. For asexuality, you kind of have to separate your sexuality from your romantic attraction. So romantic attraction, uh, obviously, you have heteroromantic, aromantic, biromantic, panromantic, homoromantic. Honestly, you could even do like gray romantic, demi romantic. It's a whole thing. You could do almost anything in that area. That one, um, I am heteroromantic, like I said, but I have a lot of trouble because sometimes I, like I always wonder like, mm, but sometimes I wonder, would I, would I be romantic with a girl? Maybe if they loved me. And again, it's those hypothetical situations that come in to bite you because it's like, well, you won't know until you try it. But most of the time uh, for your romantic attraction, it's another one of those things where you should just know. Maybe watch movies or read books or something and see who you're drawn to kind of thing. Um, but most, most people, like, you know. And if it gets to the point where you're like, Jenna, I really have no idea. Like, please know that you don't need a label. First of all, to be in the community. Second of all, um, to identify as ace, to identify as queer, anything like that. If you just feel in your heart that like, I, I'm weird, I don't really know what I am, that's okay too. Um, some people take a long time to figure out their asexuality. Some people never figure out their asexuality. Some people have figured out their asexuality and still have moments where they have no idea what they're doing. So really, we accept everybody. You can be whatever you want. I think still my biggest advice for you is to do research, whether that means going online and like looking up people's stories about being asexual, or uh, if you read books about it or watch movies, well, just kidding, there are no movies about it, but you can read books about it. There's like maybe one TV show, but I, I have found that the best way to figure out if you're ace is to compare your experience and your uh, relationships and your thoughts with other people who have gone through that experience already. If you're looking for somebody's experience and you wanna compare it to mine, I'll give you a quick rundown of kind of how I knew I was asexual. It took me a while to figure it out, but a lot of the things that kind of resonated with me about being asexual, I do not understand flirting and like, I don't wanna say like sexual cues, but like sexual tension kind of thing. Like I don't get it. I, I'm very nervous that a lot of people have flirted with me in the past and I've just had no idea because I don't really know what that means, or that I flirted with someone inadvertently without knowing it. Additionally, one of the things that really showed me that I was probably ace is that I am sex repulsed. I didn't even talk about that. I will talk about it in a minute. I have just always felt really uncomfortable by the idea of sex, whether it was like in class, like in class when you're learning it as like a fifth grader, you're like, wow, this is uncomfortable. But like, there comes a point where most people move on from that apparently. Whereas I was kind of stuck in that phase for like ever. And I'm still in that phase where I'm like, I don't understand. Why do you guys want to watch this? Like, this is weird. I think that's one of the biggest things that can turn people on <laughs> to being asexuality is that um, either you don't understand sex or you don't want to have sex or you're uncomfortable by sex, anything like that. Um, and if people call you immature for not being comfortable with sex, like don't listen to them because that is valid and I am very uncomfortable with it. So that is a big thing. If you're questioning sex period, uh, you may or may not be asexual. Another thing that really just like showed me that I was asexual is in middle school, I had uh, this <laughs> issue with my girlfriends where all of them would be very interested in guys, um, whether it was like guys at our school or celebrity crushes or anything like that. Um, and they would always ask me like, oh, like, don't you think this guy's really hot? And I'd be like, ah, sure, maybe. I think that's the right answer. I don't really know. But then in like similar to that, you know, I never felt that way about girls either. So I was always like, well, I don't really think the guys are hot. I don't really think the girls are hot. What's happening? Who am I? Cue existential crisis. And kind of going along with that, uh, part of the reason why I didn't understand why people were so attracted to men and or women is that I really don't like naked bodies. <laughs> like they make me really uncomfortable. I can handle like the top torso of guys is like fine. I can appreciate that on, on some days, but like, Nobody should ever be naked. That is a firm belief of mine. Please keep your clothes on. <laughs> That's another reason why I know I'm sex repulsed and asexual. Those are like the main things that really got me. Um, there are some specific experiences 
in those ideas uh, that I've found that other people share in. Like a lot of people do have problems like in middle school where everybody else is horny and you're just like, mm, can't relate. That is something that asexual people usually have in common. Some people are not sex repulsed. Um, ace people can be sex positive. They can be interested in sex. They can appreciate and enjoy sex while still being asexual. I think that's an important thing to point out because that can be misconstrued. A lot of people think asexual means no sex, um, but there are just as many asexual people who are interested in sex, who do masturbate, who do enjoy sexual things um, that do not. So don't think that if you enjoy sex, you can't be asexual because that's just totally not true. I can't relate, but <laughs> I'm not gonna discount you for that sort of thing. That's all I can do for you. I can give you information. I can tell you all this stuff about my experience, um, but in actuality, like I can't really tell you if you're ace. You kind of have to figure that out for yourself. I say this a lot when I talk about asexuality, but I'm gonna talk about it one more time. Don't think that you're ever gonna be 100% certain about it. Um, I know a lot of people in other sexualities can be 100% certain of their label and they're very passionate and confident in that label uh, but a lot of ace people it takes us a while to become confident in who we are and it takes us a while to accept that you will not always know there are a lot of times where you may change your sexuality based on experience there are a lot of times that you will question your sexuality because of various things for instance I have really started appreciating aesthetic attraction of people, which is another level of attraction. I know there's so many of them. Aesthetic attraction is like just liking somebody like for the way they look like artistically, if that makes sense. Like when you look at a painting and you're like, wow, it's so pretty, I could stare at it all day. Like that's how aesthetic attraction translates into humans. Um, and so I recently have been really aesthetically attracted to a lot of men. And in getting to that point, I started to question, am I actually ace? or am I actually just like heterosexual like everybody else? But no, like I can appreciate how a man looks, but like if I'm not sexually attracted to him, I'm still ace. Um, and so it's like little things like that where you'll have moments where you question, oh, am I actually ace though? Most of the time you are, and you're just going through like a weird thing, but sometimes you may end up changing your sexuality. There is no shame in claiming to be asexual and then a couple months later going through something and realizing, just kidding, I actually am sexually attracted to girls or guys or whatever. Um, and so don't be ashamed if you go through this whole process of questioning your sexuality and you end up picking something different than you thought you were going to. We will not judge you or shame you or anything because all of us are struggling the same way you are. Yeah, yeah, that's like pretty much all I can tell you as your guide to asexuality. Um, I know it's a lot. I know you're probably very confused and I'm so sorry about that. But um, like I said, just keep looking for other people's experiences um, and eventually you will figure out your own experience. If you have questions, if you need help, if you need something more specific than what I just gave you because I was very vague on a lot of things, uh, definitely leave a question or comment down below and I would love to listen to your experience too. If you are uncomfortable with leaving a comment and you want to get really specific you are welcome to leave me an email or a Twitter DM or anything like that um, I'm always available always open I love talking to people about asexuality it's super fun but yeah I'd love to be able to help you and uh, ace people are great thanks for watching bye guys